Hi, good morning, everyone. How is everybody doing today? Not too bad. Good morning. 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 And I manage the CTS College Private Preschool Academy, primary pri private primary school, and the private secondary school. Um, if you would like to get on to me after the information session, my email address is lbrown at ctscollege.com, or you can call me or WhatsApp me at 753-2330. If you're unable to reach me via um, phone call or WhatsApp, you can always call our office line, which is 6712551, or you can email us directly at study at ctscollege.com. So um, before we begin this morning, um, I just want to just basically find out from like two or three persons that is actually on the um, meeting this morning, how you guys heard about CTS College. Um, I got a notification via Instagram. Okay, okay, great. Good morning, my name is Rashida. Um, I got um, an email on, I just emailed pop up on my um, laptop. So I just went on it and I found you guys. Great, all right, so thank I'm you. I'm seeing the ads. From seeing the ads, great, no problem at all. So at the end, I of get my email. You got the email from us as well. Yeah. Okay, perfect. So at the end of the session, um, I would send an a uh, survey, and on the survey, we would just like for you to just fill out a few questions, nothing too personal, um, to just basically capture how you guys heard about CTS College and that kind of thing, as well as. By the show of hands that is actually on the Zoom application, have anybody ever heard about CTS College before? I attended CTS College. Great, great. So we have yes. students as well. That is great. Yes, I heard of it from my sister-in-law, Tisha Warren. She attended there. Nice. That is great to hear. So... Um, thank you so again so much for joining us today. Um, so basically, um, we'll be looking at a number of factors for secondary education. And by looking at these factors for secondary ed education, I want to ask you just um, some, some questions here this morning. How many of you have given consideration of um, to what careers that you would like to study, especially for the parents that is on looking for the next best option for their child, or even those who, who that is actually looking for upward movement in their company. Have you all ever given consideration about that before? Yes, I have. Yes, I have. Great. That is very much important because regardless of what career path that you actually go into, you must be qualified because persons that is actually in senior positions in organizations or various organizations within Trinidad and Tobago, by extension the Caribbean and extension the world, they usually have a higher qualifications, whether they, whether they have a bachelor's degree, whether they have a master's degree, you must be qualified in the field. Um, how many persons or parents here are actually working or planning to work after started to work after CXC? I. I was one of the persons that started working right after CXC. Right, just like myself as well, and I am sure just like most persons as well, you started working right after CXC because you got that that those basic um, compulsory subjects, whether it be maths, English, and a science subject to, to start your dream job or to actually start working so that you can finance your other study in, in other institutions within Trinidad and Tobago, right? And have you ever considered what job opportunities are available for persons with only CXE? Not exactly. Not 
Right. So most persons that actually has CXC degrees, they usually start off at a low tier job, whether it be in the government service, and they actually work their way up in time to come. And that is not because of the lack of um, funds, but is the availability of study. So obviously persons would have to actually, in order to reach a senior position in a company, they must be qualified. So here at CTS College, we would actually help you be qualified for that dream job. So we, we can take you, as the saying goes from zero to hero in no time here with us at CTS College. So from your um, secondary school education, we can take you straight up to your bachelor's degree and even your master's degree. Um, could you guys just hold for me um, one second, please? Sorry about that, guys. So for today's agenda, we'll be looking at why study CXC and the importance of studying CXC. Um, we'll be looking at why CTS College and what makes CTS College different. Um, CXC or CSEC at C CTS College, the subjects that is associated with CTS College, as well as registering with CTS College and registering for CXC for both private candidates or mature candidates, as well as full-time students under the um, CTS umbrella. Um, we're looking at the GCE CXC subjects the entire academic year, which, was be, which would be broken up into two semesters, um, the fees associated with CTS College, um, CSEC program, and then we'll be taking you from CSEC to your degree. So CSEC from, your, from CSEC to your degree is basically letting you know what steps you can take after CXC with CTS College to move on to your degree. So what I would like for, for you to keep in the back of your mind, right, especially if you're um, and uh, your, your, your main interest is in the business field or within the computer science or information technology field, I want you to keep in the back of your mind that CTS College is basically the one-stop shop for education, right? And I would get more in-depth into that as, as we go along in today's presentation. So why secondary education? This is a, a burning question for, for everybody. Even myself, even when I was going to school, I'd be like, wait, boy, I really have to put myself through the stress of actually doing CXC and all the anxiety and all the nerve wracking thoughts that come with it getting your SBA is done, right? So CSEC is evidence of a secondary education. Here at CTS College, we want to ensure that all students that is actually enrolling in the program is ready to write the examination, right? CSEC is an entry requirement for many tertiary education programs within Trinidad and Tobago. So even if you plan to study with CTS College here after the CXC program or the sec private secondary school, or even if, um, if you plan to go to COSTAT, or even if you plan to probably go to UE, UTT, you must have a minimum, the minimum requirements, which is usually sexy subjects, right? As well as it is a means of career change. So for basically for some persons, if they probably want to move up or in their company or, they, or in their job, they would actually need an additional CXC subject because sometimes you may have three, two subjects, maths and English, and then you this well in order to get this available position to get the salary increase you must get an additional subject so all of this is uh all of these sorry are benefits of the cxc program sometimes it even goes for personal achievement like last week i even had one um parent reach out to me she said you know linda i want to do it because i have two young children in secondary school and i want to be able to assist them and this is also part of achieving your CXC certificate. It's also for personal gain and personal achievement to help yourself and also help your children in the long run. So I know some, most of you said that you heard about CTS College already or you know about CTS College already. Um, but just to expound or to el elaborate a little more about CTS College, CTS College is more than just a 
tertiary education institution where we host a different a number of different programs here at CTS. But at CTS College, it is where the experience is beyond the academics. CTS College has over 20 years of um, experience in the education industry, right? And before I go further, if at any point in time, you guys, you have any questions or you have any concerns, feel free to use the chat, right? And we will also have a question and answer segment at the end of the session. So I would be happy to answer any questions that you might have. So you can feel free to drop them down as well, and I will be able to assist, right? So CTS College is um, accredited, or it is ACTT, are re recognized by the Accreditation Council of Trinidad and Tobago. CTS College offers a wide range of programs from CXC to diploma to bachelor's degree and master's degree. Right, so remember in the beginning, I told you that CTS College is the absolutely one-stop shop for education. I want you guys to just keep that, th that sentence in the back of your mind because at the end of the session or coming down to the end of the session, we will be covering those. CTS College also offers a wide range of professional developmental programs. So for example, parents, if you want to broaden your horizon, um, expand your resumes, or even if we have young persons that is actually on the, on the meeting right now and you want to actually get professionally certified, even in resume writing, business writing skills, um, payroll and taxation management, CTS College is actually the place for you to be, right? We are definitely the place for you to be. You can visit our website at www.ctscollege.com for more information about our college. Because like I said, we have over 20 years in education, tertiary education here at CTS College. So I would like to bring about some of our personal achievements that we have achieved so far in our 20 year tenure at, at CTS College. So like I said, CTS College hosts many bachelor degree programs or two bachelor degree programs, as well as we also host an ABE program. And the first one is ABE, which is the Associate of Business Executives. So for persons coming right out of secondary school, right, and they want to pursue that business management field or business administration, ABE is definitely the way to go. It's an international degree that is internationally certified from the United Kingdom. And we have we are the proud winners of 96 ABE World Prizes from, 20, from 2007 straight up until 2021, right? So we, and ABE is actually offered in different countries around the world. So to go up against those different countries, it means that our students are performing extremely great in the program. We also partner with the other awarding body, which is the University of Hertfordshire. And the University of Hertfordshire is located also in United Kingdom, Hertfordshire. And we have 47 university prizes with the university. We are the winner of two ABMA Academic Achievement Awards. And with the Accreditation Council of Trinidad and Tobago, we are actually um, the winner of 11 awards. And those awards will be broken up into um, different parts, which will be six for student support services, three for excellence for an establishment in quality management services, and two for excellence in teaching and learning. And in touching on teaching and learning, here at CTS College, we have a great group of lecturers, well-certified, well-dedicated group of lecturers. And you'll be hearing from them shortly as they bring greetings for you on behalf of the CSEC program and what you would expect or what you would achieve when you, are, when you come into the program here with us at CTS College. So moving on, we'll be looking at some success stories about C of, of CTS College. And some of the success stories that we have, you know, some parents would say, well, CTS College, they, we only have a form five um, class setting and we 
you want to have your child join the session, no problem, that is fine. But my child is just came out of SCA, that is absolutely fine. We have parents that is online with us and I would call upon them just in a short second, Mr. and Mrs. Sipasad, who would, is a live testament of their daughter, Suri, that is actually in the CXC program. And the great thing about Suri is that she actually started the program just out of SEA. Suri was one of those unfortunate stories where she, were, she was zoned based on her geographical location by the Ministry of Education. And being zoned, her parents wanted her to get the best education. And they say, you know what? They will come to CTS College. Obviously, they had multiple meetings. They, they spoke to um, the director. They even spoke to myself before they made a firm decision. And Suri came to CTS College. And in 2020, she actually passed two CXC subjects with full passes, grade twos. And she's now doing math and English as well. And Suri is only 11 years old. And well, she's probably 12 by now, but seeing Suri, she's so very tiny. She's so very tiny in the classes and Suri is doing exceptionally well. And I will have her parents come on shortly to give their testimony about their experience with us here at CTS College. So just to touch on some other success stories as well, we have nine-year-old Sanjay Bridge-Lalsing who started the program with us at CTS College in 2017. And he did information technology. In doing the information technology exam, he was able to pass the exam. And that was done through CTS College in 2018. He passed two more subjects in grade one and two. And then he moved on to his science subjects in which he would be doing that in this year and next year. Even his sister as well, 14-year-old Emily, she even passed her subjects in her subjects as well in 2018 with grade ones, right? We even had 11-year-old um, Raphael Rattan and 12-year-old Daniel Sanaswi. All of those students that I'm actually calling out are students who did not attend classes from Form 1 to Form 1, but right out of SEA students were able to complete the examination and pass the examination with the help of the lecturers. Right? We even had, in, tw in 2019, we had 14-year-old Humchan um, Bisunial, and Humchan wrote six subjects. And out of these six subjects, he got all six passes in grade ones. Here with us at CTS College. Right, and all of these are live testaments that our program or the program that is being offered here at CTS College is actually working and it is available for your child as well. We would provide the students with the best support available in terms of completing their SBA, but most importantly, we would also need the support from the parents that is associated with that child to ensure that they, the goal of writing the CXC examination in that one year period is completed. So what I would like to do now, I would like to invite um, Mr. and Mrs. Um, Sipasad to come on and share their, their, their personal testimony about CTS College so that you would be able to hear for yourself. So um, Richie, good morning. Are you all hearing me? Yes. I don't hear anything. You're hearing me, Leonard? Yeah, I'm now hearing you. are breaking up a little there. Yeah. Anyone here? Yeah, you could go ahead. Okay, um, so I have a something. Um, good morning to everybody. Good morning, Lyndon. Where now? Yeah, I basically. Are you hearing me now? Yes, you're hearing me better. All right, cool. All right. Good morning to everybody. Good morning, London. 
Good morning, parents, and everyone who may be in attendance today. Um, basically, my name is Richie Sipasad, and I am sorry, is that my... Can you hear me now? And now hear me, right? Yeah, we are hearing you. I don't know if anyone's saying or not. Are you hearing me, Lena? Yeah, I'm hearing you, Richie. You can go ahead. Yeah, I'm hearing you. No one is hearing me. Internet? I'm hearing you, but you're, you're breaking up a lot. Yeah, you're breaking up a little bit. Richie, try um try turning off the camera and see if that would help with the, your bandwidth. Right. Are you hearing me, Melinda? Yes, perfect. Right. Okay. Right. Sorry about the internet. So what's going on right now? Um. Again, my name is Richie. A lot. Okay, we're breaking up a lot. Um. I don't know how to fix this. All right, so, yeah, you hear me now? Yes. Yeah. Okay. That's good, there? Yeah, we know him. Okay. Oh, it may cause deception. Right, so um, good morning again. Once again, good morning to everybody. Parents, Linda, good morning. Um, right, so my name is Richie Sipasad. My daughter is Suri Nadine Sipasad. Um, firstly, I just want to thank CTS for giving me this opportunity. Okay. Right, so I just want to thank CTS for giving me this opportunity or platform to just share a few things with you all or just say a few things based on our journey with my daughter um, moving from a SCA level to a CXC level. Um, basically, the things why I might share with you all is probably how she cope with the work, how she how she um manage her time and stuff like that. Um, just a little quick history on on Suri. Um, Suri had attended Montrose Village, which is in Shabonas, which is a good school, has good passes, has good teachers, a good principal. The program they have is it's pretty good to us. Actually, zoned as Lyndon had st had said before. Um, Suri was zoned into one of the schools in Shabonas. Um, so my wife and I had decided that we would send Suri or, or let Suri attend CTS, where the program was built directly from C, from SCA into uh, CXC level. Now, I mean, you must know your child. You must know your child's ability. You must know what they, could, what they can do and what might be hard for them. Now, Suri is a child. She may, not, she may not be able to cope with like six subjects or nine subjects at once. So my wife and I had spoken in length. We had spoken to Lyndon. We had spoken to Matthew. We had spoken to Ravi. And they had also they had, they had explained to us like how this program is set up, how it would be beneficial to Suri, and how it would work for her and how it would work for us to as parents. Um, so we just took a leap of faith and we, we decided to put her into the CXC and, and see how, how it would work for her. Um, so basically, I mean, as a child moving, she was 11 years moving from SEA to CXC was kind of hard for her in the beginning because basically it was something new to her. It wasn't like some like what she was accustomed to doing. It was basically something new to her. And how she, well, when she started, she did only two subjects. She did at that time, she did EDPM and she did office administration, right? So these subjects have like a lot of work, plenty work. And it also has SBAs in these subjects as well. And so SBAs can be, can take time, can take a lot from you. Um, but Suri was able to, to handle this. Because one of the one of the reasons basically we saw is that how she did two subjects, the two subjects that she did, she had classes two days to the week, right? And within this two days to the week, it wasn't like the whole day, it was like probably half day. So so right there and then, I mean you can see that she had a lot of time. There was a lot of time allotted to her, like during the week, because it was only two days for the week. So one advice I can give to parents basically is that 
if you decide to, I mean, let your child do how many subjects that you, you, you must know your child's capability on how much subject that they could do or, or if they could do two, three, five or whatever, right? I mean, in our case, we know Suri might be able to handle two CXC subjects that has SBAs, right? And so within the time management as parents, the advice I can give is that you need to know how you would manage your, your child's time within the week. Because remember, they were, she had, well, our experience, our daughter had two subjects for that year, and she did two in two separate days. So she had like three days and plus half year of each day where she had a lot of time where she can and she, where she could have done a revision. But she did revision. She did a lot of past paper questions. She did a lot of research where there was time for her to actually focus on the two subjects. Um, so that is one in, in handling the workload for how well how we helped her handle the workload is how she managed her time during the week just doing two subjects. I mean that's like a key thing in getting it done. Um, the the only thing that was kind of kind of slightly a little tougher was SBS. I mean moving doing SBS for the first time at the age of twelve. I mean it was kind of a little tough for her, but and. It was kind of because it basically it was new, it was research, it was a lot of work that she had to do at the age of 12. So how she got that done was support. She got a lot, a lot, a lot of support from CTS College. I mean, the classes that they had were not only subjected to just the time that they would be in class alone. Um, any questions she had, she would she would shoot an email to, to Lyndon. She would talk to her teacher. They also, and most of the teachers in CTS actually extend the time where if they were doing past paper questions, they would do multiple choice. If they're focusing on the SB, it will not just be only the time allotted for the subjects. They will actually go out and help beyond that. So they would have like sessions like after class in the evening, sometime if Suri for her own had problems with questions, the teacher would actually individual individually teach her I mean, or help her. I mean, so there is not like a, where she wouldn't, or your, or your child wouldn't get that individual attention from teachers from CTS that, that was there. So the support for her was, was totally there. It was like a totally different, um, what you'll be accustomed to. Um, so we had, we had decided to, to go forward with it and she did do those two subjects. She got the support from the school as well as home. And basically we had helped her manage her time on how she did, how she would stretch all the workload. So basically doing two subjects for a week for her, she had a lot of time. So she was be, she was able to stretch all the work where it was easier for to handle, for her to handle. And she was successful with getting with getting two tools in that area. Um she also did a computer literacy course in, in CTS. So the other there are other extra curriculum activities that they probably offer in, in CTS that can enhance her, her studies and stuff with the, with, with the new age that we are going into with computers. Um, so yeah, I would say that CTS is one of the best decisions my wife and I had made with letting Siri go to CTS. I mean, another thing is that what, what we thought that it would actually kickstart her career, kickstart her, her education, her, her academic, then, she doing CXC like at the age of 12. Um, she was successful. She's doing two more subjects right now. She's about to write, I mean, I think she's studying right now. So she's writing those next two subjects like next month. So hopefully she will be successful and, and, and keep at it. So we thought that that would be a, a very, very, very good idea that moving to CTS. And, and not only that's moving to CTS, but her going to CTS with the education and the success and stuff like that. I mean, the whole the whole aura about the school itself is is like is like it more or less family oriented. I mean, you could call Lyndon anytime and ask a question; he's always there. You could call Ravi anytime, who's the director, and he would he would be there to help you out in any way at, at your, that you can that he can. And it's just the whole. I I saw a difference in my child from SE to CXC and the difference in wanting to learn and wanting to go forward and do stuff funding with CTS. And I would totally, totally recommend CTS or you, you consider sending your child to moving from SE to CXC because it's not really, it's not difficult. It's, it, it's just how you as a parent manage your time or help your daughter or son manage their time 
to actually stretch out the studies. And the support is always the FMCTS, whether it's the allotted time for the classes or whether it's not. They are always there. I, I mean, I, I know weekends when Suri was doing SBs, like late in the night, and, and the teacher had a class with the students that was actually going the extra mile and helping the students. I mean, that's like remarkable. I mean, not going to get that anywhere else, but I mean, I don't have any other experience any other else, but I know for sure you're not going to get that anywhere else. But CTS, they, they actually want to have your, your, your child pass the exams. They can see the extra push and the extra how they would stretch out to your child. Um, so for me, it was one of the, again, it was one of the, for my wife and I, sorry, it was one of the best decisions we have ever made with our daughter's future and her academic career on whatever she decides to go forward with in life, whether she decides to do business or, or information technology or sciences or whatever. But CTS is a good, good choice. So I just want to thank everybody again for listening to me and hearing this from 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 me. Um, I do apologize for my wife not being here. Um, she has another class. She had a class. She have a class to do via the virtual too as well. So I think she's she's currently in that class too as well. So she she do want to apologize for not being here. But I mean, I just represent. Thank <laughs> you uh, so much for your time, Richie. And so parents know that was not paid advertising, that was basically asking, right? So um, you heard from Richie and um, yourself, which is actually a parent that is involved in the, in the CXE program as it is now. And let me just say that all of this transition, uh, Suri actually attended classes when we switched to online classes during the pandemic in 2020. So for those parents who might be worried about, you know, where classes would be online, um, how, how we, we would be able to cope and stuff like that with classes, all of that I will touch on later down in the presentation. But now what I would like to do is to basically call upon um, some of the lecturers that is actually here with us this morning um, to share or to give feedback on, on their teaching your children or those persons who will be lecturing to your children should you choose CTS College as your educational provider. Um, so what I would like to do is to call upon um, Ms. Ramai, Ms. Marissa Ramai, who is one of the English teachers here with us at CTS College to give you a basic insight of what you would experience with us here once you join. Ms. Ramai, good morning. Um, good morning, everyone. Is everyone hearing me just fine? Good morning, man. Yeah, everyone's hearing me? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, great. Um, pleasant good morning to everyone, and thank you for choosing CTS College or just even being a part of this information session. Um, as Mr. Brown rightfully said, uh, my name is Miss Marissa Ramai, and I'm an English lecturer here at CTS College Private Secondary School. And I even lecture in the SCA program as well, as well as the kids MBA program. So um, basically just giving you an insight about my experience at CTS College. And uh, there's this one Chinese philosophy that always resonates in my mind that says, choose a job you love and you will never have to work a day in your life. And that's basically um, my experience at CTS College because very rarely you will find an institution that values its students tremendously and even provides that education beyond academics. So even at this reputable institution, um, CTS can boast and even students can boast about their unique experience. So even with the online learning, simple things like classwork and homework and additional learning materials, they are delivered to each child via WhatsApp, electronic mail, even uploaded to our online portals like our Google Drive and the Ibis Link Academy. And as you all saw in the video before, if a student is absent from a session, the recordings are readily available immediately after the session has ended. So basically no student is left behind because we believe that each child's education is of pivotal concern to the teachers and even to the members of staff. So I am very grateful for my opportunity here 
and even the camaraderie, because that's something that CTS College can boast of. And even if you speak to the members of staff and the students, they will always tell you about the hospitality and that friendship and that family that we have built here. Um, it is an organization that I would recommend to any parent or guardian. And all I can say is that, you know what, God indeed did me a great favor for placing me in the company of good people. And I know that if you select CTS College, your child will experience academics beyond excellence. And it's not just about focusing on the academics, but really harnessing and creating and developing a child holistically. So not just focusing on the academics, but all rounded students. So thank you for your time. And I do hope that you all enjoy the rest of the information session. And just remember, guys, keep safe. Thank you, Lyndon. So much, Ms. Ramai. I would now like to call on Mr. Vishal Gonada. He is one of the mathematics lecturers here with us at CTS College. Vishal, good morning. Hi, a very warm welcome to each and every one of you. Uh, distinguished guests, respected staff and teachers, students, as well as parents, welcome to the most dynamic institution, that is CTS College. My name is Vishal Gunada, and I am one of the mathematics lecturers at CTS College. I am delighted to thank the presence of a personality that hardly needs any introduction. That is none other than our, one of the hardworking program managers, Mr. Brown. I, I want for each of you to remember that your limitation is only in your imagination. You know, there is something quite magical about success, right? For example, if I were to ask you to name the first man who walked on the moon, I'm pretty hopeful that I will get a bunch of answers, right? However, if I were to ask you, who was the second person? I'm quite sure that I would get little to no answers because traditionally, we do not value the second or third position as much as we should. After all, it is not only the first person who deserves the fame, the name, or the notable status, but whether you believe it or not, each and every one of you deserves some form of recognition because you work hard and give your best. However, at the end of the day, what matters the most is where do you stand relative to your yesterday? Not relative to your friend or who, who probably performed better than you in the end of term or you know, the midterm, etc. Now, I'm not going to lie to you and tell you that the journey is going to be an easy one, right? It's all dependent on you, and I'm here to tell you that CTS College, we are the place to, this is the place to be, right? The staff is very, very supportive, as mentioned before. The notes are provided to you all before, um, sorry, right after the class, the recordings, etc. And the, the staff is there to help you 24-7, right? So I just want to welcome you all to the CTS family, and um, Guys, enjoy the rest of your day, and I'll see you all in September, hopefully. Bye. Thanks so much for that, um, Vishal. Um, I'd now like to call upon um, Ms. Chotu, Vasha Chotu, who teaches biology with us here at CTS. Hello, pleasant good morning, everyone. Can you all hear me? Yes. Awesome, wonderful. As Mr. Brown just introduced, my name is Ms. Varsha Chotu and I lecture biology and Spanish at CTS College. I have been there um, from, I believe it was 2016, 2017 and not a, I have no regrets at all. Honestly, you know how a working environment is something that is of crucial importance, not only for your own personal and professional development, but also for the quality of, of work that is produced. And that type of environment, that healthy environment is what I found working with the CTS staff. CTS family, I should say, because we literally are a family. And we are not just saying this just because. I, I'm speaking honestly, all right? Because we are there to support each other. I mean, times get really challenging throughout the term. Um, things are really hectic with TXC, with preparations, with everything but we are able to come together, we grow, we communicate well. And I, that is something that I have always loved and admired. And Mr. Lyndon Brown, he really, really goes like beyond, beyond 
honestly, for both staff and students to ensure that your students receive nothing less than the best of quality um, education, experience, um, communication, everything. He's well on top of his game and he really supports his staff as well. You know, we I remember when um, last year, when we had our first case of the imported coronavirus, we, um, Lyndon immediately, um, when he got on top of the game, he learned Zoom and he taught all of us, you know, how to go about using the program. We had set up, you know, online Google Drive so that all of our students can have access to information. And we were there, we were on top of the game. Our students did not lose out on anything because we couldn't simply go to physical classes anymore. And the process of adaptation and rolling over to a virtual environment became really seamless and it became, it was a wonderful experience. It wasn't like a torture or anything, you know? And that just shows that when, that just shows the difference between a leader and a boss because a leader goes with you, a leader motivates, right? And that is something that we have and that is our experience with Mr. Lyndon Brown, honestly. Once you choose CTS College as your choice um, of as your educational institute for your children or for yourself, you will get nothing short, nothing short of the best, honestly. And you have lecturers who care. We are available basically 24/7 by email, WhatsApp, you name it. Your your children, if they have any um, difficulties doing homework, we are there. You know, sometimes later I was in the night responding to, to messages saying, hey, this is how you do it. Um, if they have any questions, any problems, we are there to support throughout every step of the way because we understand that, you know, life has so many challenges, the pandemic has so many challenges and learning itself, while it can be a challenging, it can be something enjoyable once you have that support system and you have that caring a nurturing type of um, personality from the, from the teachers. And all of our lecturers are like that at CTS College. So thank you all very, very much. Uh, you definitely would not regret anything. And for sure, for sure, you all are gonna get the best of experience and the best of quality here at CTS College. I look forward to seeing you all in September and take care everybody and be safe. Thank you. Thanks so much, Vasha. And lastly, I'd like to call upon um, the final teacher to give regards this morning, which would be Mr. Weeby, Mr. Emil Weeby, who actually teaches full-time mathematics here with us at CTS College, as well as he also lectures um, physics as well. Um, and he would share his sentiments. Mr. Weeby, good morning. Hi, good morning. Thank you, Lyndon. Good morning, everyone. Um, so as Mr. Brown would have said, I am the CSEC math teacher as well as the SA math teacher at CTS, and I also lecture CSEC physics. Um, so ever since I've been at CTS, um, if there's one very important thing I would like to stress on is the support system that they have, all right? Um, with respect to my colleagues, they would have told you all, and I also like to reiterate on that as well, um, we are a family, we work together, right? Um, so we have a very strong support system, especially with the students. And we don't just see the students at CTS as, as students and they're here with us for um, a, a, a year. And then afterwards, you know, we would get another um, batch of students. We actually grow relationships with them. Um, they are at a very delicate age. Uh, most of these students are between 12 and 18. And sometimes we even have students who, you know, are older right and what we do we we have relationships with these students we help them to learn we we um we we learn about them all right and what they like in terms of in in terms of the learning process like what 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 works for them basically um for instance like videos uh powerpoints um exercises fun exercises sometimes we may incorporate some jokes um that that applies to the subject so we try to um, we try to, to to make the learning process as fun as possible for all students. So you would want to learn, you would want to improve on yourself. Um, we even give advice, right, in terms of um, professions later on, and so forth. So um, I'll I'll be very short, but I'll just like to to, to stress on the fact that um, your children at CTS College they are exposed to a lot more just than a lot more than just 
come in to learn, but they come here and they, they, they also um, build relationships with us uh, that will help better them for the future, right? Another thing I would like to stress on is I know some students will come to us saying that I will say, you know, I'm not really that bright or um, I'm not that smart or whatever. But what I like to tell students is uh, these, these subjects that we do, right, it's just like a sport or a hobby that anybody would have here, right? It's not that there's smart people and then there's people that are not so smart. Everybody is basically the same, right? Um, think about it, it's like a sport. The more you practice that sport, the more you spend time and you invest in it, the better you get, right? So it's the same thing with these subjects. And basically that's what we need to show the students that as long as they practice and they continue at it and they have that motivation to continue moving and growing forward, um, they'll be able to achieve like anyone else. And you know, so just I'll just leave you guys with that there. So thank you, everyone, and have a wonderful day. Be safe. Thank you so much, um, Emil, and thank you so much, staff, um, for sharing your sentiments here with us this morning on the information session. So now we'll move on to the CTS College Private Secondary School. So again, um, parents, if you have any questions, feel free to utilize the chat or we'll address them in the question and answer segment shortly. CTS College Private Secondary School was founded in 2018, even though we have over 20 years in the education industry, we have been registered with the Ministry of Education for students to write exams with us as of 2018, where we have the full-time classes um, for full-time students where they will complete the SBAs and we have the part-time classes for more, the more mature crowd, um, the more um, adults or the working class persons um, here with us at CTS College. We try to, as my colleagues would have indicated, we try to create an environment that is conducive for learning, which would help if every student be able to achieve the required goals. So if your child is now enrolling in form one or they're now going up in form three and you're not happy with their current state in their private, in their secondary school, here at CTS College, we'll ensure that they, 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 they meet their required goals. I've, in my in my tenure here as a program manager at CTS College, I've met parents who say, well, Mr. Brown, I'm not 100% confident or learning. I'm not confident that my child would be able to make it through the, the entire academic year. The workload is so very much uh, um, that they can't control it. And, and, you know, here at CTS College, we try to meet the students more than half the way. We try to ensure that all students, whether it be full-time students, part-time students, are ready to write the exams within that one year that we have at CTS College. So we are not like the traditional secondary school where you would have the forms one to five automatically. Once you are registered with us here at CTS College, you would, the students would be placed in a form five class setting. And in that form five class setting, what makes us different is that they would have individual attention with strong focus on holistic development. So we have academic writing skills. We have resume writing skills. We have interview writing skills. We have um, social media skills that would help them understand how to prepare themselves for the work world when they actually go out to work, how to dress for an interview, how to write out their own resume so they don't have to pay somebody to do their resume because everything persons are looking to make a profit out of it now, right? Here at CTS College, as my colleague Basha would have said during the pandemic, all of our classes would have been shifted online immediately and that was with effect when the Prime Minister, Dr. Rowley, gave the remarks that we would be closing for the because of the COVID-19 pandemic. And within that year and couple of months that we have been writing or completing the classes online, all of our students, or well, all of our students, yes, would were able to go on to write their examinations all students were able to complete their SBAs. All students were able to attend classes. It, were there any time where we had to call parents and students to find out what is going on? Yes, there were times where we had to call and say, hey, I'm not seeing John in class. I'm not seeing Sarah in class, but 
it's a matter of getting the students back up and ensuring them that even though that you're home, you're in the comfort of your home studying or whatever the case may be, we still have an eye out for you. We are still looking forward to seeing you in our online session. We have excellent student support available from all the staff, not just my four colleagues that gave their remarks this morning, but all teachers that is associated under the CTS College Private Secondary School umbrella. It's their, their, their commitment over this past year is so unbelievable, to be very honest, to be very, very honest. I would call them and say, you know what, guys, we need to have a meeting in five minutes, or guys, this is the change that we need to have done. And within a blink of an eye, no problem, Linda, let us know how to do it. Let us see how best we can have this done. And this is the type of support, and this is the type of people that you would need in your corner in a time where education is somewhat difficult because we want to ensure that your child has the best opportunity to pass their exams and not have the cause to repeat their exams in time to come. Um, we know online sessions may be a bit difficult. It may be hard on the eyes. It may be frustrating. Um, it takes away from that classroom feel because you don't have, you're not, you're not able to meet with your friends to sit down in the back of a classroom, but you're only in front of a computer for extended hours. We have, we have in-house counseling for all of our students who would like to meet with our counselor to probably talk and stuff like that. Um, we even have the social events committee. Over the past year, we had career fairs, online career fairs, where we had various um, NGOs as well as companies around Trinidad and Tobago coming on to share the, required, the job requirements with us here at CTS College and what is required to join the company, what, what subjects they may need and stuff like that. So all of this would be available for your child at their disposal once you are here with us at CTS College. And talking about support, you have a dedicated program manager, which is yours truly, right? And I will be, I usually make myself available every day to assist parents and students. We have an online learning management system, which is called IBISLINK. And we also have Google Drive, where all the notes, the handouts, the recordings are made available for the students so that they can review the sessions, they can go back and look at the recordings should they not understand what took place in the class or if they join on late and stuff like that. All of this would be made available for them in the event that they are unable to attend any session or they should they need to review for midterm and end of term examinations. All textbooks would be digitally copied and be placed on the Google Drive. So you don't need, need to even purchase a textbook unless we give you advance notice. Everything would be provided, all handouts, all slideshow presentations that is lectured in the class would be made available by the lecturers for the students. We have WhatsApp support groups. So if at any point in time you happen to miss an email, the email would be made available for you to review the um the email, sorry, would be made available on the WhatsApp group so that you would be able to go back and see what was sent. We even have group for groups for parents, right? So the parents you would be assigned to your, um, your very own PTA group where important information would be sent out every day for every session or every week for every session, we re reiterate the, the class link because sometimes information gets lost in an email and we don't want the students to say, well, you know what, sir didn't send the information or Linda didn't send the information for class. So we actually send it out to the students so that they can have it on the WhatsApp group, right? And this is the purpose of the WhatsApp group. Should they need any additional assistance? Should they have any questions? Um, do, Teachers are also applied to the WhatsApp group. So if they have any real-time questions, it can be addressed immediately. For SBAs, we have SBA groups also available as well. At CTS, we have uh, we are a family-oriented culture. And I am also probably one of the most competitive program managers here at CTS College. So once this whole COVID-19 um, situation actually blows over, 
and we are able to host sports day once again. I expect to see my parents, my students out in their full form so that we can defeat the other programs and I'm victorious. Our yearly color is usually red. So we're coming out red and ready to take them on. So yes, we have a lot of um, programs available for students, whether it be um, sports and family days, uh, we have career fair, job fairs, we have field trips. We even have a social events committee, CTS College Social Events Committee, which usually takes the students on hikes throughout Trinidad and Tobago. And it is usually <clears throat> available at a minimum cost. So that costing would usually be announced upon the time for the, um, the hike. So now we look at the subjects that is available. So the subjects um, under business would be POB, Principles of Accounts and Social Studies for Technology. We have Information Technology, Electronic Document Preparation and Management, and Office Administration for Languages. We have English and Spanish um, for Mathematics. Or for Sciences and Mathematics, we have Biochem and Physics. Human and Social Biology, Integrated Science and Mathematics. All of the subjects that is actually highlighted in red would be done as IGCSE subjects if they can, uh, for private candidates. So I would get into that a little later down. So I'll just give you like about a 10 seconds to just review the, um, the subjects that is available. Here is our timetable for the upcoming academic year. Um, also, if you would have received an email from me um, with regards to the link for the information session today, you would have also received that email, that timetable in your email together with the application form, which I will talk to you a little bit about just now. So this is what our sessions would look like for both full-time and part-time students. Each session would be a three hour session and there would be breaks in between. The classes are only one day for the week. It's not repeated unless we're coming down to the end and we probably need additional review or we need to brush up on past papers. And the good thing about all of these subjects, whether, it be, whether you be a full-time student, a part-time student, or even writing exams in January, what would happen is that you would be exposed to past papers almost immediately. So at the beginning of class, on the first day of class, you would probably hear your children complaining, well, I got homework on the first day. How do I get homework on the first day? We believe that practice makes perfect, right? And once you keep on practicing, 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 you would get a gist of what is expected. All the past paper questions, all the midterm and end of term examinations that we conduct here at CTS College would be associated with past paper questions. So it will give the students the real life experience of what to expect when completing examinations. So what would happen is that during that one year period from September to May, June, parents and students would be exposed to at least 20 years of past paper questions. And this is past papers in paper ones, paper twos, and paper threes. So by the end of the year, when they're ready to write the exam, they would have covered all that past papers. None of the questions that is actually delivered for homework, for um, class quiz, for midterm and end of term examinations, actually comes from the top of the head of the, the, the lecturers or the teachers. It's all past paper questions and we make a reference to the years that we, re we get the questions from. So like our students are actually writing exams in June, 2021, actually did even up to January, 2021, past papers before they left for, for exams. And those past papers went as far as back as early as 2005. So you, your child get the advantage or your children gets the advantage of completing past paper questions as early as the first day of class. 
So you, you might think past paper questions, it may be hard. All of the answers for the past paper questions can usually be found in the slides. It's that simple. Once they review the homework, it would be done. It can be seen in the slides. So registering with CTS College is a two-step two process. To register with CTS College, you would need to complete the application form. If you do not have the application form, I will send you the information after the information session as well. And you would email that application form together with one, one form of ID and your birth paper to CTS College or study at ctscollege.com. So even though you might got get the email from me directly um chances are i i would see the email yes i'm not saying that i wouldn't but sometimes i may miss an email so it's better that you send it to study at ctscollege.com so that one of my colleagues can also pick up on the registration and have the child registered on the application form it would outline all the information that we would need together with this you the parent and or the student would select which subject that you would be starting with, right? Once you submit the application form, you pay the registration fee of $200. Now the registration fee is a mandatory fee and this is non-refundable, right? And you make a down payment towards the tuition and you provide one valid form of identification. In terms of making the payments, um, because of the COVID-19 situation, our, office are current, our offices sorry, are currently closed. So payments can either be made online or through the bank. And I would also send you that information via email as well, should you like to commence with payments um, upon the registration. What I would advise parents to do in the event that you are actually making your registration and you, you have to make payments, I would advise that you start making small payments as of registration so that when classes actually start in September, we you wouldn't have an exorbitant amount to pay. And if you would like to have a payment plan associated with your registration, I will be sending you the CTS College fee policy and the fee policy would outline all the information about your registration and how to make the payments towards CTS College. Right, um, for private candidates, which would be for candidates in the afternoon or evening students, you would, you would complete the same application form as well and send it to us. However, for registering with CXC, private candidates would require to sign up for June 2022 or January 2022 examination by registering with the Ministry of Education. In order to do that, you would have to um, click on the link. As you can see on my screen, the link would be sent out to all students, even via email coming up. And we will let them know when to register, what documents they would need to register, whether it need a, they need an affidavit, um, uh, where applicable the birth paper, um, and payment for the revenue office. The payment for the revenue office would only be applicable if you would have already gone through your two free chances. If you had already gone through your two free chances, it means that you would now have to pay. If you would have written in a secondary school before and you had written once as a private candidate, it means that you have one more free chance. Your free chance only counts if you are, if you have already used your two free chances as a private candidate, right? And once you have filled out the information on the ministry's website, you select where you would like to write the exam. For example, if you're in Shabonas, if you're in San Grande, if you're in San Fernando, if you're in Port of Spain, the Ministry of Education would basically group you or place you in an institution where it's closest to your geographical location, right? And this is basically for private candidates. So for private candidates, when it's time to register for your examination, you can look out for the email from me with all the details as to how to go about in doing so whether you're registering for the January exam or the June exams in 2022. So for the students that is actually attending CTS College on a full-time basis between the hours of 9 a.m. to 4 p.m., you'll be classified as a full-time student. Those students would need to send us a copy of your electronic birth certificate and one form of national identification, whether, you, whether it be your ID card, which is a national ID, 
or your passport, right? So that we would be able to have it on file because when you're going to write the exam, now in secondary schools, students would need to show the invigilator their ID. And we just have those on file to ensure that the names are actually spelled correctly when we are registering them with CXC directly and the Ministry of Education. So parents, if your child is coming with us on a full-time basis, we at CTS College or I, myself would take care of that registration for you. If I don't have the information by the time you are ready to write the exam or your child is ready to, ready, ready to write the exam, I would basically give you a call, send you a message letting you know that I need the information once you have confirmed that your child would be writing the examination. Registration with CXC is mandatory for students who wish to write exams at all times. Now we'd like to look at the exams for the science students. So for any student that is actually wanting to do um, the science subjects like biochem, physics, and or even integrated science, unfortunately here at CTS College, we actually do not host the SBAs that is associated with these subjects as such students will be able to write these exams as um, private candidates with Cambridge University which is the IGCSE exam, which is a UK-based assessment body that is also internationally recognized and accepted by universities and employers, right? In terms of writing those examinations, CTS College usually partners with Upper Level Educational Institute, as well as SBCS in Chamflair, where students can write the exams there. However, please note that this exams co come at an additional cost. So in addition to paying CTS College for your regular tuition, you would have to pay the examination fee. In terms of the examination fee, I unfortunately would not be able to quote how much those fees would be at this time, because those fees usually differ based on um, how much the international body charges. However, what would happen is once your child is registered to do the IGCSE subjects, I myself would take the opportunity to email the students and call them, send the information on the WhatsApp group so that they would know when the registration would start, which usually starts in January of the upcoming year. So registration for IGCSE subjects would be in January of 2022. I will send you the application form together with the details that you would need to use to register your child for those examinations, all right? And I will be willing to answer any questions as it relates to the IGCXC exam. So those exams would not, you would not be able to write those exams here with us at CTS College. If, however, you are a, can a repeating candidate or a student that is repeating the subjects and you would have already written the subjects in your public school and completed the SBA, then we would be able to probably facilitate the exam because you do not have to um, do a SBA because your SBA mark would be applicable for two settings. So parents, any subject that requires an SBA, so for example, maths, English, principles of accounts, principles of business, electronic document preparation and management, office administration and information technology, those seven subjects would require your child to complete an SBA. And in completing the SBA, if, you are, if your child is not satisfied or if you're not satisfied with your mark at, upon completing the exam and you would like to repeat, the, um, the SBA mark is only applicable for two settings, right? And I would be sure again to answer any questions as it relates to that. So just to give you a breakdown of the academic year, the academic year at CTS College runs from September 20, 2021 to May 2022, and it consists of two Semesters. Semester one starts on Monday, the 6th of September, 2021, and it ends on Saturday, the 11th of December, 2021. In between those semesters, 
in, in, sorry, in between semester one, we have already mapped out when would be midterm examination, when would be end of term examination, and when we would actually be starting the school-based assignments for the upcoming ac academic year. So once you attend the orientation, which would be taking place on September 4th, for the full-time students, once you are registered, you would be getting all of these important dates to note. In semester two, um, classes start on Monday the 3rd of January, 2022, and ends on Saturday the 7th of May, 2022. One thing I, I like to say, we are not like the traditional secondary schools where students have the Easter vacation and a lot of Christmas vacation time or, or spare time on their hands. During the um, Easter period, we have classes uh, just like a reg regular school. There would be no Easter vacation. During that time, students would be required to attend classes. So for example, on Good Friday and on Easter Monday, that those days are holidays. We don't usually have classes on those days. However, this year, because of the entire state of emergency and because of the COVID-19 protocols, we actually had classes on those days because we, we used that time to maximize on past paper review sessions for all of our students, which actually worked out well in the long run. However, though, during um, Carnival, which was which a traditional year would be like, which would be during Carnival, um, during the Easter vacation, we usually have classes. We usually have midterm and end of term examinations, so that students would be able to complete the syllabus. Students would be able to work on their SBAs and submit to their teachers. Everything would be done online. Everything would be done digitally. In the event that students would be re, um, require assistance with their SBAs in the upcoming ac academic year, we would let the students know when they can come into CTS College. Obviously, we would work with the discretion of the Ministry of Education and by extension, the Ministry of Health to ensure that we are not breaching any COVID-19 protocols to assist our students with their SBAs. If not, the teachers that is associated with the SBA subjects would provide clear guidelines in terms of how to complete the SBAs. And it's pretty much simple. It is very easy to complete the SBAs. It's not hard once you follow the instructions and once you submit your, the students submit their drafts. It's very much important for students to submit their drafts so that they can get feedback uh, as to when the exams um, would be on how well they are moving forward in their exams. So in terms of the fees that is associated with CTS College, we do not have term fees. All our fees are based on the full academic year. So the cost per subject, it is 1600 per subject. So for example, if you're doing maths and English, the cost it is 3200 for the entire academic year. And as I said, the academic year starts from September and ends in May of 2021. Sorry, 2022, my apologies. And there's a $200 registration fee. For students doing five subjects for the academic year, it could be a total of $8,000. And no, you don't have to pay the $8,000 upfront. We have flexible payment plans available. So once you register and you select your five subjects or you select your three subjects or your two subjects or even one subject, we would assist these parents in setting up the payment plans and how much you can pay monthly, right? Um, the CTS registration fee is a one-time fee and this is a mandatory $200. As I said, this fee is a non-refundable fee. CSEC um, exemption fee, um, CSEC exam fee is, is a free for the first two attempts, like I said. However, the candidates must be a national of Trinidad and Tobago. In the event that the candidate is a non-national, they would not be exempted from this fee. They must pay the fee um, after the student is required to pay the fee where applicable. So for example, if you are, have used up your two free chances, if you're a non-national, that is writing as a private candidate, you would be required to pay 
your um, examination fee, which I believe is like about $7 for registration and $20 per subject. And this fee can be paid at the revenue office in your location, right? And the GCSE fee, the IGCSE fee with uh, physics, chemistry, and biology well, comes at an estimated cost of $450 per subject. And this is payable to upper level. Um, but like I said earlier, I don't want to put any fees and make it confirmed because these fees, especially the international fees for the IGCSE, these fees are subjected to change. So coming up closer to the examinations, we would definitely let you know when you have to pay those fees and what would be those fees associated with those examinations. Right, so we are basically coming down to the end. So remember, earlier I said CTS College is basically the one-stop shop for education. And with over 20 years in the education industry, right, we have seen that over 14,000 students complete secondary school um, each year in Trinidad and Tobago. Even if there are 5,000 available jobs each year in Trinidad, who would be the most likely person to get that job? Obviously, it would be the person who has the highest qualification. And of, of course, that person must be qualified from the ground up because even though you might have a, a degree or a, a bachelor's or a BSc, you must have some form of maths and English to complement that degree as well. So employers first, firstly sh shortlist those with the highest qualifications, and this may not even be CSEC or CAPE. So it is always important that you look how to move forward after completing your degree here with us at CTS College. So upon completing your degree, so for example, if you want to go, or if your child wants to go into business after, we they can take the business route and as I mentioned earlier, we have the ABE, which is the Associates of Business Executives. And this program consists of three levels, level four, level five, and level six. Students who complete level four and five are now exempted from level six. And they can move on to their bachelor's degree. And ABE basically comes up with the Diploma in Business Management with a specialization in business management, human resource management, and marketing. After completing those programs, the pro you can move on to your Bachelor's of Arts in Business Administration. And the great thing about this Bachelor's of Arts in Business Administration, it can be completed in as little as one year. Uh, compared to other degrees within Trinidad and Tobago, it can, your Bachelor's degree usually takes a minimum of at least three to four years to be completed. And this degree is internationally recognized by the accredit, um, QAA, as well as it is locally recognized by the Accreditation Council of Trinidad and Tobago. And it is offered here with us at CTS College. After completing the bachelor's degree, students can even move on to their master's in business administration. And we have a number of specializations available from general the general option to human resource management, to marketing, to logistics and supply chain management, entrepreneurship, um, oil and gas management, healthcare management, and digital technology management. Even if your child doesn't want to go into the business field and they want to go into IT, coming right out of secondary school, they can go right into the BSc in information technology and graduate with honors with the University of Bedfordshire. They, all they have to do is complete the bridging program, which basically allows them to um, move on to the year one. So after completing the bridging program, they move on to year one. And that program is actually three years long, which is year one, year two, and year three. And each year or each level can be completed in as little as six months to a year. So it is highly recognized, it is recommended, and I do assure you, it is the fastest route to your degree here with us at CTS College. So basically, this is just a, a visual for you to see 
of how you can achieve your CSEC passes to your degree here with us at CTS. So after completing the CSEC degree, you can move on to the BSc in IT. Then you move on to the master's degree. If you are looking at business administration or a business field to get into, for your child to get into, you can move on, complete the ABE program, then move on to the business administration program and then the master's degree. So I just have a quick question here. So if, you, if your child is actually um, enrolled for five subjects and you believe that they are not ready to complete all five subjects um, all at once, or you're probably thinking that they are stronger in one subject and then weaker in one subject, that is absolutely fine. You can allow them to do the subject that they are stronger in and then they can move on to the other subjects at a later date. And if you would like them to repeat, that is definitely not a problem. Um, in terms of completing the exams at CTS College, unfortunately, we do not facilitate the January exams. We only facilitate the June examinations. And this is for um, Ms. Ragunanan who sent that question on the group. Um, Ms. George, um, regarding the bridging program, unfortunately, no, you do not get a certificate for the bridging program. You only get your completed certificate at the end of the actual degree. In terms of the costing, I don't want to quote an incorrect figure. So what I will do is that I will send you the information about the program um, as it relates to the BSc in information technology. Um, but before I dive in into the question and answer segment, two of the program, if at any point in time, parents, if you are um, a bit uh, what to do for your child for the summer program, if you're unsure of what subjects they can undertake while with us at CTS College or they're still making up their mind, you are free to join the virtual summer program here with us at CTS College. Um, the summer program starts on the, 20, on the 12th of July and ends on the 20th of August. And during this time, they would be exposed to all the subjects that we have available for CXE. And even if you have children that is in primary school as well, we facilitate standard one to two classes and standard three to five classes with Ms. Ramai and Mr. Wibby <clears throat> being those teachers as well. And we even have computer literacy and we have bonus days where we have a full host of fun activities for them to complete during that time. We even have the Kids MBA program, which is basically creating future entrepreneurs. And that program is not a tertiary education program, but is an international program where students can learn the know-how to start their businesses here. Right here in Trinidad, we have had over, let me see, over 80 students completing the Kids MBA program. And we have another cohort starting on the 12th of July as well. So yeah, look, you can feel free to register for the summer program. Visit the website. If you need any, any information about the summer program, I can send you an email as well. So that has brought us to the end of our information session today. Um, what I would like to do now is to open the floor for any questions. Um, feel free to unmute your mic. Feel free to even um, use the chat to be able to answer accordingly. So I saw Ms. Carla Charles Yee had her hand up. So Ms. Carla, we'll start with you. Hi, good morning, everyone. Um, Thank you so much for the information you guys provided this, this morning. Really appreciate the enlightenment. Um, I have a, an 11 year old son who um, we're hoping to sign up possibly for the secondary program. Mm -hmm. um, and we took a look at the timetable. Now with the traditional sense of a five year secondary 
system that we have where you do your subject at the end of a five-year period and you know that there are so many so many hundreds of contact hours per subject and then we now have it condensed into one year or one of our concerns is is there going to be sufficient time to be able to cover um, all the required curriculum uh, elements to yes. successfully complete and do the exam by June Oh yes, so most definitely there would be sufficient time um, in completing the syllabus um, because the syllabus is actually a two-year syllabus that is actually compact. What we do is that we ensure that the students are well prepared. So we provide them with notes to read ahead. We even provide them, like I said, with the handouts, the recordings of the sessions and the past paper questions are actually integrated in the sessions. Um, the syllabus actually, or the syllabi for the various subject areas are usually completed um, in the, I would say probably, eight, which, which, which would probably take us until March, and where most of our teachers complete that entire syllabus with enough time for review of past paper questions. So we don't teach the past paper questions last and leave all the content first as we go along and each topic, the topic ties in with the past paper question. So it's somewhat like killing two birds with one stone as we go along so that the students will get the practice. Thank you very much. I have lots of other questions, but I'll give someone else a chance to ask a question. No problem at all. Um, Ms. Balkaran, I saw that you had, you, you was next. Hi, good morning, everyone. Um, good morning. Information was very informative, and what I really appreciate too was the teachers. They seem to be very warm and welcoming. Um, one of the questions is that my daughter, she is not from Trinidad. She's away, but she just came back. And I saw that you said that um, needed bird paper, but um, she has an international well. But how would the registration work for her? Right. So... <clears throat> Um, if you don't, well, I, I can always give you a call after, but in terms of the, the registration, it would work as a regular student. Um, what we will do is that we would, pro we would definitely have her registered. We have had international students already, students in the U.S., even um, by extension, our brothers and sisters in the Caribbean as well. And those students were able to register and complete the examination. If at any point in time, your child would probably need a letter to take to the immigration for um, study purposes and stuff like that, we would be happy to provide that letter for you and just give us advance notice so that we can draft up that letter and get, send it out to you. So um, having your child registered is definitely not a problem. Um, once they're registered under the private secondary school um, system, which is CTS College and not as a private candidate with the Ministry of Education, there would be no additional cost attached because we never had an instance where we had to pay additionally for those students. Okay. All right. Great. Thanks. No problem at all. Uh, Ms. Pope? Good morning. Good afternoon. Um, I have an, um, a seven-year-old granddaughter. She's um, going in eight on Sunday, but she is in standard one right now, but she's going into standard two. Now, I didn't really any know about this. Eh? This child just put on this and hook up for this. So I said one Saturday, I'm going to go to see really what's going on. But it's nice that you hear, and I heard that standard from standard one to two, can really study with you all for the for the summer. All right, yeah. So, but she but she then born really here. She's born she's a born in the states, United States. Mm -hmm. But she wants to do some studies with you all. How could I go about it? All right. So, I what I'll do, Miss um, Pope, is that I would um, check back the registration system, or if you can send me a message on the Zoom chat with your email, and I will mm -hmm. send you an email with the application form for the summer program so that we can okay. get her involved in the summer program. Um, in terms of the primary school, our classes would be starting on the 6th of September should she need 
any additional classes um, during that time, evening classes, because for the primary school as it is right now, we only have evening classes. That's not a problem because sometimes she's have work to do, homework to do, you know, so I mean, she can get some edified about her homework because she goes to um, Sacred Heart School, you know. No problem. And well, so, the lecturers uh, for those classes would be Miss Ramai that you heard from this morning and Mr. Wibi as well. Okay, so um, so I will just have to send you my email. Yes, just send me your email and I will um, send it out to you. And what I would also do, guys, is that um, I will leave my WhatsApp number in the chat. So if you have any questions, you can also send me a WhatsApp after the session. Okay, okay, okay. So I'll be thankful for her to um, for her to do this. This the shell went on this for herself, eh? I didn't. I didn't do anything. <laughs> she went on it for herself. So I thank you very much, and I'm going to get in contact with you. No problem at all. Thank you so very much. Mr. Paul? I, I believe your mic is muted, Mr. Paul. I'm not hearing you. Oh, sorry. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Mr. Brown. Um, I have a lot of questions, but I just want to deal with the most important, first and foremost, right? Um, I heard that you mentioned about the first and second chances in terms of doing this CXP. Um, I did CXP in around 2013, right? And um, I, I feel, right? And I did go back to reapply, but I heard, I got the information late. So I was like about a year or two after BCXC, right? They told me that they don't do it in the school that I went to. I went to the political secondary school, right? And so I couldn't get in. So I went into work right after CXC. Um, my question is, could you explain in a little more detail about the first and the second chances? Because, well, I would think that my in school around the 2013 exam would have been my first chance. Right. So in terms of um, the CXC examinations, like I said, if you are in a public school, I would like to say, um, and school and you didn't write the exam, it means that you didn't sit the exam, right? If, uh, if you came out of the public school, and you registered with the Ministry of Education, you'll be classified as a private candidate. As a mm -hmm. private candidate, you'll be allowed two free chances. And those two free chances would be allow you to write the exams two times. On your third attempt, you would have to pay, right? If you did not write it at your secondary, at your public secondary school, would still be allowed. And um, one more thing, pertaining to the virtual class, right? Um, the is the registration the same for that? Yes, so the registration would automatically remain, and the cost of the class for both evening and um, full time students would remain the same. Um. Can I, after the completion of this virtual class, can I then start my normal class, which would be starting in September? Yes. Because um, I was looking at the business section that you showed on the timetable. I see I had POA, POB, and I think it was Integrated Science or Social Studies. Um, so the POE and the POB, you said that it has SB, but my thing is when I did CXC, I went into the science field, right? So I didn't get the chance to study POE or POB. Would that be a problem for me? No. So because you haven't studied, studied those subjects before, all of those, all of those, 
so, um, syllabus, the content in the syllabus for all of those subject areas would begin from scratch. So even if your child or if like yourself never had the experience or been exposed to those subject areas before, it's nothing to be worried about. Each year we, we restart the syllabus from the beginning. My last question, um, really quick. So someone who does not have PhD passes of grade one to three, I have grade four to five, right? Um, is that going to be a problem for me registering and applying to go into the business field? No, there, yeah. that wouldn't be a problem. You would be able to apply. Um, it's a matter of actually getting the work done. It's it's it's. Problem. And maybe at the end, when you're done, take the rest of the questions and everything, could you just go back with me on the explanation of the past papers as it pertains to the subject? Oh, no problem. We'll do for sure. Thank you. Ms. Ragunanan? Hi. Well, good morning. good morning. I'm interested in public speaking to my nephew. Uh, well, I have other things I want to start them with, but I'm only interested in the public speaking. Is it available for summer class this time no, around? No, not, not this time around. However, I realized that when I saw you put it up on your screen, I didn't see it as I asked the question because I was interested in it for this summer before he starts the September semester. So I was trying to give him something to keep him occupied, but I didn't see it in your schedule. What you place on your screen is why I'm asking. Yeah, the, actually, the lecture so is when actually, would it be available? Um, the lecture is actually currently unavailable for the actual, oh. the actual summer program because it's so early in the day. Um, how old is he? He is seventeen. Okay, well, he would be applicable to do it with the um, as a full certificate, right? So, what I'd advise you to do, or what I can do, is basically have the program manager reach out to you regarding um, having him attend the, or registering him for the session and having him do the class because I believe there's another session coming up shortly. Oh, because I want to register him for the computer literacy as well with the um, um, public speaking before the semester starts. So I get him occupied so he does not be idle between now and September. No problem. But I will WhatsApp you on my information as to what I'm interested in. Phenomenal. Definitely. That's I look forward question. to your message. Thank you so much. No problem. Um, Ms. Carla, you had another question? Hi there, Mr. Brown. This is uh, Mr. Yee, Carla's husband. We have spoken Hi. earlier in the week. Yes, um, yes. Nice. So my big son, of course, would have just finished um, keep. So, but I do recall when he did um, CSEC, yeah? And the, the syllabus contact hours for him was, you know what I mean? Let's say like 130 hours, okay? Now, when I, when I got a glimpse of your timetable there just now, for my 12-year-old son now, let's, and, and he, he loves, let's say, engineering. So, so physics would be a thing that he would do. Is it that um, the, the classes for the students, is it that they have only one class, one, one, one class per week? Let's say for someone who is doing, whether it be physics or, 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 or maths, the reason I'm asking that leading question is because if you tell me they're doing one class per week and it was either nine to 12 or one to four, of course that's three hours. And with, with, your, with your academic year running from start of September and the syllabus is being um, completed by the school very aggressively uh, sometime at the end of March, right? That gives me about 27 weeks, yeah? Um, and if I, you know what I mean? I, I'm a math person. So if I do 27 weeks by three, three hours, I, I, for me, just based, based on that calculation, I fall short of what I see recommended by, um, you know what I mean, IGCSE syllabus um, as one to two hours. So how, you know what I mean, how as, as a school, as a teaching body for a very young mind, like a 12 year old who's probably going to do physics or chemistry, um, are we sort of compensating for that? Right. Yes. So 
in terms of the actual syllabus, right? The syllabus, yes, is taught within that academic year, right? And the sessions are three hour sessions. So what would happen is that our term actually finishes in May. So with, between September to the end of April, we, have, we teach the entire syllabus, right? And in teaching the entire syllabus now, all the students that is in the program would be required to complete midterms and end of term examinations. And they would also be exposed to all of the content in the syllabus. So for example, sometimes the physics teacher or the, even the bio and the chemistry teacher would post the notes beforehand and probably ask the class to read ahead. Now it's entirely up to the student if they would like to read ahead, but it, we still go over all the material with time for review. At no point in time we have ever met a, or had an issue where we ran out of time for the students to complete the syllabus for any specific subject area. And this is because the time frame or the times that is allotted for each session, a lot of work is getting done. So it's not, we, it's not that like we are actually cramming the work down the students that, okay, so we, you need to get this, even though you don't understand we're moving on without you, no. It's not a situation like that. Once we're moving as a, uh, as a class, we move as a class so that everybody would be able to understand that all students would be on the same page and that the syllabus that is being delivered, whether it be by Ms. Chotu, whether it be by Mr. Lashley, which is for chemistry, or Mr. Emil for physics, it is delivered within that allotted time frame that would help the students understand what is being delivered in the classroom. And we even provide the students with homework so that it would act as extra review. So whatever is done in the classroom, we get uh, past paper questions and the students get quizzes based on what was completed. So they are always revised and always kept in the loop as to what is being done in the class, the class sessions. So everything would be done in tandem with the IGCSE syllabus, even though the time frame may be a bit off, but all content, I do assure you, all content would be covered. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much for that very thorough uh, response and a very okay. easy question. Um, a student who's doing science, are they considered full-time or part-time? Because I saw it on the, the, the part-time table. They would, they would be considered part-time. Um, and we, in terms of helping them, pre um, getting them ready to write the exam, the registration process, we would still assist with that procedure because we understand that it may be difficult for some parents or for some students. So we would, CTS College would most definitely hold their hand in the process of getting your child registered for the program, for the exam, sorry. Okay, thanks very much. No problem at all. Ms. King, did you have a question? Any additional questions? Hi, um, Mr. Brown, this is Carla again. Sure, hi. Um, my son <laughs> wants to ask, he wanted to find out, mom, are there other kids my age will be in class? Because you know when you know most of the times is you'll find more mature learners coming back to repeat subjects. Um, what what you could say is the estimated number of kids who might be in your in your full time program. That's part one of my question. So kids, their kind of age, and the other part is with respect to your your full time schedule and part time schedule. Um, this of course I suppose if we decide to only go with two subjects we can select which two we want out of your full-time timetable. Mm -hmm. We don't have to do the full, mm -hmm. the full thing, right? Um, sure. But it means then we have, would we have to work the full-time and the part-time together, if depending on the subjects we mm -hmm. choose, right? So those, those would be my mm -hmm. two questions. No problem. So to answer question one, yes, there would be um, younger students in the class. 
um, I would say approximately 80% of the class would be secondary school students. And those students would not only be students of CTS college per se, but it would be student, um, students that is actually seeking additional assistance in lessons or need a syllabus review, repeaters and stuff like that. So 80% of the class would be um, students within the teenage bracket. Um, and the other 20% would be like the more, more mature students that is actually probably now getting into the science field, um, those that need an additional subject because they, they're probably going into a degree that requires them to have a science subject like nursing or probably going into um, like a, a profession that would require them to have a, a desired science subject. Um, in terms of, um, what was the qu second question again? My apologies. So let's say uh, you want to do, okay, um, randomly. Let's say you choose English from right. the full-time program, but you want to do physics. Then that means you do one program in the full-time schedule and the, yeah, other, the other subject in the uh, part-time schedule. Let's say the chem bio or chem bio physics, one of those. You'll be running, would you be running almost like a full-time slash part-time student? Right. So yes, you'll be running like a both full-time, part-time student. However, though, what would happen is that you all you have to do is just follow your timetable. Or the, um, Once you follow your timetable, you would not have any issues. And even though you are, um, and obviously there wouldn't be any clashes because how the timetables are designed, it is designed to uh, alleviate any clashes among any subject areas, especially if you're full-time uh, doing a full-time subject or a part-time subject. All you may have is probably back-to-back -back classes where if you're doing a class between one to four, um, your class would end at four and then your other class would start at five um, in a situation like that, but there wouldn't be any type of clashes at all. Okay, great. Excellent. Thank you so very much. No problem. Um, and also just to address the situation with the past papers for Mr. Paul, in terms of the past paper questions, um, the past papers are done in tandem with the syllabus or what is being delivered in the syllabus. So for example, if you are doing a particular subject, right? And so for example, if you're doing mathematics, and you're doing simultaneous equations. Mr. Gonada and Mr. Weeby will then work with each other to get all the topics, or all, all the past paper questions that is associated with simultaneous equations, and they will deliver that in the class so that you will get experience as, as to how to do a past paper questions for simultaneous equations. Same thing for English. If you are doing English and you have summary writing, Miss Ramai would then teach the content about summary writing, and then she would pull various articles from various years to show you how the summary would come. Obviously, there would be different types of summary, whether it be a the case maybe. Um, one more thing I would like to add, right? Um, Pertaining to the timetable, um, I was looking at the times of the classes for both the part-time and the full-time, right? I was wondering if which would be better for me if it was to do the full-time or the part-time, right? Um, the subjects that I was interested in was the POA, the POB, and the social studies. However, I was wondering if I could, like, drop the social studies and do like the OA, the office administration, or the, the electronic um, paper management, right? Um, I am a, will be supposed to be starting work from the 4th of July or the 5th of July, right? Um, I was wondering the classes the time is getting in the way of my work because I reach to work at nine and a daylight shift finishes four o'clock, five o'clock, 
depending on how they, they, they put you to rest. In the evening classes, run from 12, 11, going up all the way to like around 6, 7 in the evening. Um, is there a way that I could accommodate the class after, after work? Because it will be really, really hard for me to have to do the work and school at the same time. Right. So um, in terms of, of a situation like that, um, where, where your job is concerned, I would probably tell you to make that the wise decision in terms of seeing how you, how you would be able to attend the class sessions. Obviously, our sessions are recorded, um, but even though these sessions are recorded, I still advise all parents, all students to ensure that their children or their child attend the live session because for example if you have a question or you don't understand something yes there would be the whatsapp group but um in order to give for a teacher to give feedback that would be beneficial for you i would advise that you attend the face-to-face -face session so what i would the online session so what i would have probably advise you to do is to probably do the like the maths and the english first by itself in the afternoon where you know you have ample time to probably get home and log into the session and from there. But okay. I'll be happy to um, discuss with you after the possibility. The, the situation with the job is that in order to schedule, to balance the, the, the work hours, because I need to add up to 40 hours per week, right? It's 80 hours per fortnight. Um, I would be requiring a copy of the timetable in order to schedule the time so that I would be able to attend the, the class live instead of having to do it pre-recorded. No problem. Would that, be a, would that be a problem with the school? No, that would that definitely wouldn't be a problem. So in your registration, when I, um if you're when, if you're registering or when you're registering, just let us know and we would arrange the letter as well as the timetable so that you can take it to your employer. It's definitely not a problem. Is, is there a deadline for the registration? Um no, yes, there's a deadline. Sorry. Um the deadline would be around the 30th of um November, and that is for parents who would like to probably have their children um, write the exams in May, June of 2021. So if you would like to have your child write the exam- You mean May, June of 2022? So, sorry, my apologies. If you'd like to have your child write the exams in May, June of 2022, um, the, the deadline for registration would be on the 30th of November. If, at, if you would, not be writing the exams, but you'll just be taking the tuition. There's absolutely no deadlines, but obviously if you'd like to get maximum capacity of out, out of all the classes, we would recommend that you register as soon as possible. So the registration would be sent out later today, all of you. And if you have any questions, just let me know. Um, what I will be doing is posting a link in the chat, right? It's basically a short survey that I would like for you guys to out just copy the link place it in your url and just fill out the survey on how you found out about college all right the reason why the reason why i asked is because you spoke about the registration fee right i was wondering if the registration fee is to be paid immediately together with the registration form yes so once you're submitting the application to us you would require to, if you if you're able to submit the registration one time that would be good um but we usually give you at least two to three days to complete the payment for the registration um, excuse me. hi um how to copy a link this is a child huh? <laughs> <laughs> I send the email for you. Um, I send the email, okay? Yeah, I got the email. Thanks. I'll send you the information shortly. Okay, thank you. No problem. Do we have any other questions, guys? Yes, I, I am um, Renuka's husband. Um, Hi. The registration, you said th th there's no deadline for the registration, but for 
um, classes to start on on in September. Um, will there be like a deadline for us to bring in um, all our requirements and, and payments and stuff? Right. How does that do? So what is happening is that, um, well, it's no secret that we are currently on lockdown. So we are actually, our office is not actually open. So everything is being done via email. So I think I should have mentioned that firstly, everything is being done via email, all communication and stuff like that is being done via email. So what I would probably advise each of you to do, um, like I said, um, I would send you the email and you can send us a copy of the registration to study at ctscollege.com and you can email me directly the birth paper and the ID so I can have those on file for your child once they are doing the exams. So once that portal becomes available, I would let the students know that registration for CXC is starting and we'll proceed with the registration. Obviously, before I register your child for the examination, I will give you a call and let you know that um, I am proceeding with the registration. If you have any reservations, because once we push through the registration, it will go through directly to this um, to CXC and to the Ministry of Education. Okay, thanks a lot. <laughs> no problem at all. Any other questions before we wrap up, guys? No. 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 All right, so on behalf of the management and staff of CTS College, I would like to take this time to thank everybody for joining me this morning for our information session. You can look out for the recording for this session today um, within the next hour or so together with the application form, the timetable and the fee policy. Um, we look forward to seeing all of you starting with us in September. Um, for my staff that is actually on the chat, um, please stay for a couple of seconds, thank you. Have a good day all and continue to stay safe. Um, Mr. Brown, one more thing. Same to you, sir. Yeah. For the virtual, for the virtual class, right? Um, would that would I have to include do the two subjects that I would like to do and also the ones that I would like to do in September in one form because I see you sent me an email asking about like the list of subjects that I would like to do and stuff like that. So would I have to send the two things together or I could just send, it, send all the subjects that I would like to do in one? You can send it in one. I, yeah. No problem.